evening, good evening, good evening, oh, good evening, everybody. So today, I have a very exciting thing for all of us. On the Amma Manson Show, we do serious stuff and we do non-serious stuff. It is a variety show. I am mistress, jack of all trades, mistress of nothing. So today, I actually do have an important interview with a very learned brother of mine. It is very exciting to see that people like that would respond to little Amma when I call. But I wanted to have a conversation with Kofi. I wanted to see where he's at. I want to know his views about a lot of things. This is an unscripted interview. So please understand everything I say to Kofi is actually brand new to him. He is going to respond to me off his cuff which is very exciting because that's the kind of organic interviews I prefer. We haven't written a script. I actually haven't got questions that I have written down at all. I am going to ask him questions as my spirit directs me to do so. And because he wants to answer sincerely, he's comfortable to answer sincerely, he's not insisted on a scripted interview. And that is always a good sign with me. So I'm going to click share to my three pages. And once I have shared to those three pages, we will kick straight in. My guest is actually in the waiting room. Uh, he's waiting to join in. So we can ask him all the questions that we have. If you have questions, please do send questions to me. If you have suggestions, please send your suggestions to me. Mickey, hello. And today, good evening. So it's an interview I prefer to conduct in English because as Ghanaian as we are, we don't speak the same language. And because we have different Ghanaians who might not access um, the Chi language, if we use it, I am electing not to send, uh, to hold this one in Chi. We are actually going to hold the whole conversation in English because in fact, it is a bad habit of ours but if you remove that from the equation, we actually do understand enough English, but there is no guarantee that everybody in Ghana actually understands enough tree. So let me get my guest on board and let's have a conversation. Well, for Ben, good evening. Hello, Kofi. Yes, my dear sister, Amma, how are you doing? I'm very good, bro. You? I'm fabulous, I'm fabulous. Uh, you are refreshing after so many deaths that we have seen uh, around the world and particularly in New York. Uh, to come to us on a Saturday afternoon makes you so refreshing to all of us. And I'm sure uh, your viewers are going to share the same sentiment. So we are thankful that you would have us. Thank you. I'm so grateful you would join us. Yeah, it's a bit gloomy. It's nice to talk about other things apart from the doom and gloom. And that's what I was hoping to do with you today. Thank you so much for honoring the invitation. I am very honored to have you, in fact. So, Kofi, for those who might not know Kofi, I don't think there's many of those right now, but let's just play devil's advocate. In case somebody doesn't know Kofi, can I give you a two, three minute uh, slot to just introduce yourself and tell them a bit about you? Okay, well, Kofi Kranting, uh, I chase excellence in everything that I do. Uh, I'm a father, uh, I'm a husband, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an advocate, and now uh, hopefully uh, Ghanaians uh, will, will, will surround me uh, so that I would be uh, the first independent candidate ever to win a presidential election in Ghana. I elevate people, uh, everybody who comes around me to bring their game to a level of excellence. Uh, and I inspire people to elevate their game. Um, I think we could do better as a people. Uh, we've been blessed uh, with so many strengths. And as we go through life, um, it's, it's our duty to develop ourselves based on our experiences to elevate this game, to craft a new um, value system that's totally based on character. And I'm sure you would understand with the great character of yours, 
Um, so uh, we know there is better out there. Yeah. Uh, and for that, we are willing to bring the few good men and a uh, few good men and uh, women uh, to come together so we could, we could really elevate Ghana and put Ghana on a map of good things, not on a map of any, uh, everything negative, but on a map of everything positive. So this is where we are. Sounds very good. It's really exciting for me. So, Kofi, um, let's start with easy topics before we delve into the serious ones. We w- I want to get to know you. I, I want to ease in with what makes you proud as a Ghanaian? What, what makes um, you as a Well, Ghanian? listen, I, I, I actually honestly believe that everything I have come to be is because of my parents. Uh, I lived in Ghana. I grew up in Ghana. I went to Adisado College. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I looked up to my father and mother who were both civil servants. Uh, my father was a police officer. My mother worked as an administrative assistant at the Osu Castle. Uh, for, so I, I saw their sacrifices and that inspired me. And uh, my dad, uh, anybody who knows my dad would know how strict of a man he was in the police service. Uh, he was like nails. Um, and I became prompt because he held his values high. Uh, he was totally incorruptible. I got to be careful how I use the word incorruptible because a lot have come and said, oh, we're incorruptible. But, but seriously, though, my dad, uh, he's still alive, 93 years old. Uh, and incredibly, I mean, if you ask anyone, Archer Cranting, police officer, they'll tell him that, oh, gosh, that guy, I mean, I go to Ghana and I run into police officers who talk about him uh, when he used to be the head of the academy. Uh, so uh, this is what has inspired me. This is what has built me to be the person that I am. Um, and, and it makes me proud. And I think that trail has to be built, developed even further and continued. And that, that's what makes me uh, a proud as a Ghanaian. Because you see, Ama, if you take a look at our leaders today, I do not see a constant conversation of the Ghana that I grew up in. I see a conversation of excuses, of justification, uh, you know, uh, of uh, different and different narrative that somehow maybe we have to accept the substandardness of our lifestyles. Um, and uh, for what I know and what I grew up in, uh, they cut us short. And I think we need to do, uh, we need to change the paradigm. Um, and start doing some uh, major, major things differently. And I think the youth of today, people who have had the chance and been blessed to see a different world out there can forge together with their collective uh, perspectives so that we could craft a whole new uh, Ghana, uh, which is based on a different level of thinking at this point in the game. And this is what um, I think uh, the youth of today, like yourself, I'm proud of, and I feel good to know you guys. And um, I, I, I want just want to chant this thing on for us to come together and make this thing happen. So I want to tag on a little bit. So you said something about excuses and justification. It's one of the things which frustrates me, really, mm-hmm. as a guy at the moment, because it's becoming the popular rhetoric, mm-hmm. particularly if you look in social media. We will justify anything, we'll explain anything, we'll excuse anything. And I have been struck a few times recently where something made me think, oh, our people are not the same as what our parents used to be. Mm -hmm. Values have definitely changed from when I grew up. The ethics of hard work and pursuing things for yourself not depending on other people and waiting. Those things have all changed. But what really baffles me is what's caused the change. Mm. Why has it changed? Do you want to hazard a guess? What's why more- why, have, why have things changed so much? I missed that. Cl- yeah, why have we lost our value system so significantly? 
Well, why? a couple of things. Uh, the, if you go on my website, I explained that in something I call the 132 predicament. Can we have a website address, please. Sorry. Kofikranting.com. How difficult is that? <laughs> so if you go on Kofikranting.com, I talk about, Amma, I talk about the 132 predicament. And in part of the 132 predicament, I talk about our expectations have been dumped down because of the fact that we don't know as a people what we deserve okay. or what to get. And if you don't have an expectation of your leaders, then you cannot hold them at a higher plane. And the few of us who think, and it's all uh, our you know, perspective of reality, that we have reached or somehow we're getting along well and we have succumbed and rec we have reclined into submission. So in every organized society, what happens is you have a few people who see the light and okay. by virtue of what they do, they elevate the masses. But now the few of us who have seen the light or at least think we've seen the light have reclined. And we happy with the status yeah. and we going along with the status quo. So who then starts the fire? All the firecrackers have been pacified. You see what I'm saying? So, and, it, and, and you have to understand the dynamic of how uh, generations and people change. Somebody in there uh, stands up Somebody in there just gets up and says, enough is enough. Uh, the, the case in point, the, um, the Arab Spring, right? What happened? One person set himself alight, and all of a sudden, before he knew, was all the way to Wall Street. Uh, that's how, you know, the whole world. So uh, we need some people to stand up and say, you know what, uh, from where I'm from, I'm from a crap in okay. uh, and this and they say, Hina ne bea mo sahine, o sahine na ne hina. Inti se se de, America se mina meye o sahine. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sacrificing myself for the fight, but as I say, mo so mo dom dimechi. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, and if we do that, um, then we can make this thing happen. But it's got to be started at some point or we all end up dying. Interesting question. So you raised something about uh, fire starters, firecrackers. It's interesting. Somebody also recently said to me that in Ghana, the agency have gone to the false agency holders that the real agency holders have been disenfranchised. They have been, the power has, has been taken from the real people who can effect change. And it's Absolutely. gone through pseudo powerhouses. And mm -hmm. it really makes me think, but the more I think about it, the more it makes sense to me. Only, I but, well, there is a caveat. The caveat is, Ama, life will not give you what you deserve. Okay. Life gives you what you are willing to fight for. Because you see, people don't change when they see the light. People only change when they feel the heat. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, what, what, in essence, that's what happens. So if everybody thinks they're so deserving, if my attitude and your attitude is, you know what, um, we are so deserving of the change and we ought to be the gatekeepers of Ghana. So they have to hand it to us. Hey, uh, fool's paradise. That never happens. Right. Yeah. But as much as we think it's, we are, we, we will be more responsible gatekeepers of Ghana. We need to go fight for it because, you know, one of the sad thing is, um, the, the people who are actually suffering the most, the people who are at the bottom of the social scale, don't even realize uh, that uh, they need to get on the bandwagon and help us fight because they don't know what they deserve. 
You see what I'm saying? They are so, you got to understand the social classes. They are at such a lower point that they only think about one thing, their existence. I uh, know, the next meal. That's it. Existence That's it. is actually, yeah. I think existence is quite ambitious. They just want the next meal. <laughs> it's unfortunate, but that's the reality of our No, you, 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 you're right. You're right. And that's why we cannot get so hard to garner support. They will, yeah. they will get deprived for three years, nine months. And in the last three months, people will come to them and say, take 50 CDs and vote for me. And they will do that. Because like you said, if they can use their 50 CDs to get kinky and for once get some fish and get some, now they're all excited. They forgot about all their worries. And in the, by the time they sleep and wake up again, they're gonna be in the same mess and it starts all over again. And that vicious cycle keeps playing. So now this is what happens. The only way we're gonna break that cycle is for a, a revolution of the intellect. Ooh. And now we can't have a revolution of the intellect because unfortunately the people who create how the, uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you have to change the, um, the uh, it, no, the, 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 the narrative needs to change, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the people responsible for the curriculum to change, to change, or to start us on a path of a revolution of the intellect are the gatekeepers yes. who have all the power and they're not willing to give up the power. So if you wait for that option to happen, for us to get a revolution of the intellect, for people to elevate their consciousness, for the country to change, that never happens. So now the only thing that happens is a revolt. It's an interesting one. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I came to social media in the first place. All right, you're so doing I, a fabulous job. Thank you. I came because I wanted to challenge the status quo. Because in the Ghanaian space, it had been entertainment. It had been, let's repropagate absolutely anything and everything. And we needed numbers of people who put out alternative content. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it was a huge risk for me because I am actually an academic. And it's not, social media was not necessarily the hub of any academic. Mm. When you came here, you got lumped in with a particular group. And there was a huge risk when you came to be lumped in and to be labeled and to uh, lose any credibility you had. But gotcha. I wanted to, because I wanted to put information out there. I wanted to challenge the way people access information. I didn't want just the gatekeepers to be the only people who get information out. Mm. I wanted my little voice in that little corner. And it's been great over the last two years I've been here. To see so many people change direction in the kind of information they put out. I don't know. Have you followed what's happening on uh, the cyberspace? Have you seen any changes? And do you see any hope from here? For uh, Well, it's, it's funny you should say that because uh, since COVID, uh, now uh, the playing field has changed a little bit. Now it's more on social media. So... Uh, for you guys, the titans of social media like you now takes to the way. So now, all of you a sudden... I'm not one of them. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, you are. Be, you, you, see, because you see, oftentimes people think you need a lot to accomplish a lot. Yeah. You don't. No, you, you, don't. Need, you, you just need a concentrated group of people who are passionate in their hearts you feel a need to take action. And I'm a, that's all you need. And you have that in your following. I read your com the comments. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? And, and that's why I'm saying that you are a titan. Just based on the value yeah. and quality of the, uh, the when I, I read comments on, on posts and things that you do. So what I'm saying is now that the playing field has changed, now you have a whole lot more uh, at your uh, disposal, you, you, your arsenal just quadrupled, tenfolded. Uh, so now, uh, definitely, because now the conversation has changed. But isn't it funny, though, how uh, two political parties who I call an in, uh, uh, incompetent twins, uh, the uh, what I call the uh, uh, scandal brothers, right? All, All right. of a sudden, the scandal brothers, the terrain for the scandal brothers changed.
and now it's on social media. So all the hundreds of thousands of dollars, God knows the millions that they put towards uh, this campaign going into election. But by virtue of divinity, it's been leveled to a level playing field, right? Amazing. So now you got now they got to rub shoulders with people like Amma, and Amma did not spend a dime putting together any infrastructure, right? But this is yeah. this is this is amazing. And the voice can be heard, which is phenomenal. I mean, I, I've, I've followed a few things with what's happened at home. I, I've seen a few glimpses which have given me hope. I think for me, one of the greatest things I've seen recently was not the previous Eid when an MP somewhere in Ashanti region, I think it was, sent the usual bags of rice to the community mm. instead of the primary school he'd probably to construct. And usually, you know, with our people, those bags of rice would have been accepted mm -hmm. in, uh, enough for them. It wasn't what they wanted, but they would take anything. But mm -hmm. for the very first time in my lifetime, I saw a marginalized group of people forget about the next minute. Ain't there something? I was blown away when I saw that. I was blown away. But isn't it funny? And, and Amma, to your point, this is why NDC spent $300 million in the last election and they still lost. Because now Ghanaians are wising up. Definitely. And they're saying that, listen, we will take your money, but we're not voting for you. We're not stupid. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's starting to come, and we're hoping that that capitalizes, it, that that becomes, that margin of people get bigger, and we yeah. can benefit uh, from that. Um, that where people come to the realization that, listen, uh, I said on radio this morning that the two political parties of the NDC and MPP, all they do is they master in deception. They yeah. have to, uh, that's all they do. they masters of deception. All they do is they have to trick the populace to a point where they think something is going to happen, so let's hold on. And now you got some of the sympathizers just saying, you know what? Maybe Nana has a plan because it's going so well with COVID. So let's give him four more years and see. And I'm like, boy, you don't even know. You're signing your death warrant, you know? Um, and this is what they do. They get genuine good people to buy into their uh, nonsense. And but they give them time. And they give them time. And they give them time. I'm a, and all I can say is, listen. If, it had, if, if they had a winning plan, it would have worked 10 years ago. And th we just need to kick him out. Well, see, I think it's about time. One of the things which is really exciting for me too is that for during this COVID period, it's the first time my audience is actually predominantly people resident in Ghana. Wow. I my analytics. Wow. <laughs> The first 18 months, it was predominantly people in the United Kingdom, the United States, the rest of Europe. And I had like a 1% Ghanaian viewership. And at the time, wow. but today, my statistics, and it's been consistent for the last two weeks, my yeah. greatest viewers are people resident in Ghana. Ain't and that something? I saw that, I knew that the tide had changed. Because for you guys, talking to those of you in the diaspora is good entertainment. How mm -hmm. many of you have votes? There How you many go. will go home to vote? Mm -hmm. How many of you are actually influenced by what goes home? Mm -hmm. So when you go home, you see the colorful picture for two weeks, you make noise, and then you come back where you are. You don't really affect much. Mm -hmm. It is the average Ghanaian resident in Ghana that I have been desperate. Wow. To and for the very first time since I started this outreach, this is my second anniversary, I finally have that audience. And that gives me an awful lot of hope. An awful uh, hope. Absolutely. And that should also tell you that all the time that you spend paying and giving quality uh, 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 projects, it's starting to stick. It's paid off. You know, uh, you are consistent. You are persistent. And now uh, the benefits are starting to show and it's showing at the most important place, which is where it really matters because these people can actually uh, turn their, not just their, what they feel, mm -hmm. but that could be generated into votes. So uh, you should, you should, this is a good time for you to press hard on it. Well, that was the aim. I mean, I came, I, I don't know how many of you followed my initials, 
in my initial broadcast, I told you guys I was here for election 2020. Mm. But I launched for election 2020 in April 2018 because I had done a little bit of studies. And mm. I knew it would take me approximately 24 months-ish wow. to establish and for people to know what you represent and to reach the target audience. But then, yes, for the very first time, we do have the attention of the people in Ghana. It tells me data is not cheap. Mm. I am not an entertainer. So for people in Ghana to come to my channel, to come watch what I do, because I don't put out entertaining content. I actually mm -hmm. put out content which is uh, education-driven. Absolutely. For the average Ghanaian, for that number of Ghanaians, actually to pay the expensive uh, tariffs to come mm -hmm. watch in the hope that they might pick something up, tells me that they are ready for change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and listen, we... And, and uh, Amma, that's why we need you. And we need your audience. We need your audience just as much as we need your followership. Uh, to Listen, this is not about Kofi Granting wanting to be president. No, this really. is about, no, it's got nothing to do with that. Uh, listen, as much as I want to go back to Ghana, granted, but we just want it to work. It, is, it, it should be everybody's dream to see. I mean, can you not just imagine the day that Ghana would be better than Dubai, uh, do, don't you get chills? Like when you, like you will be, can, can you imagine that you could actually file a complaint at a police station and they will actually call you back in acknowledgement that we have gotten a complaint from you and we followed up and give you, wouldn't it be beautiful? Why, why don't we, why, I, I, I don't understand. Nobody wants that. I we want it to work. We do, but not enough of us knew what options there were. Mm. Not enough of the people. I think a few people in Accra and in Kumasi who speak big English and drive your fancy cars want to change. But unfortunately, there's been a disconnect between those of us who want the change and the people who can actually make it happen. Mm. A lot of us think that we are actually significant, but it's in a democracy, it's one man, one vote, isn't it? There you go. As enlightened as you are, you have only one vote. Mm. And most people don't see things the way you do, then, I mean, your, all your intellect doesn't really lead to much, does it? Mm. It mm. is more about outreach. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to engage you. For those of you who've only just joined recently, this interview is actually unscripted. Kofi doesn't know what I'm about to ask him. Even I don't know what I'm about to ask him. I wanted it to be unscripted. I wanted it to be very organic. I wanted it to be what I feel like asking him and to get his genuine responses so you guys can understand a little bit of the man he is. I want you to know a little bit about his character. I would like you to pick up on his integrity. It is those things that actually matter to me the most. So, Kofi, the dream, the dream for the average Ghanaian young person. How do you actually visualize this dream? What, what do you envisage for our people? Well, listen, um, you know, when, when, when I go around before uh, coronavirus, I travel around the world and sometimes I sit and like you visit places, you go to Singapore, you go to Korea, North Korea, um, you go to Japan, you go to Dubai, you travel around the world and you see everything about these cultures is scripted to make them look good. Maybe yeah. perhaps even make them look better than they really are. And I oftentimes ask my teammates and the people who I speak to that. You see, when you take a little child um, in Ghana and you look at their life as they grow up, the whole narrative, the whole conversation is about their acceptance of failure, their acceptance to just take what is handed over to them to live and see if their life can just fit in into that craziness. And then you look at the same child in Sweden, the 
same child in Amsterdam or in Japan, and they are being they are the best. Their government and their leadership them the best, and the child grows up in an environment where everything around them certifies, validates, confirms, acknowledges that they are the best. They are surrounded by the best. Everything about them is superior. Then you come to Ghana, my neighborhood, Latibio Koshi or to Dansoma. What does the child see? Everything about them is a failure. So they grow up and they become a product of failure in every aspect of their life. So now, Ama, how do you expect that same child to compete with their counterpart in Japan or Sweden? <laughs> they lost the game before they even, they yeah. lost the game before they got to age 10. Yes. Because they're in a totally different world. You see, and then you have a whole nation that is growing people who have that mindset and that acceptance of life, which has nothing to do with anything success. It has everything to do with everything failure. And then we get what we have in Ghana now, which is people don't care about their country. They litter anyhow. If they have to defecate, they do it anywhere they feel convenient for them. And you have a government who will always make you feel that, Ama, you are better than Kofi. Ajua, you are better than Isifu because you come from different parts of the country. So fight because Ama really doesn't like you. Kweju doesn't really like uh, Isifu. And people pull knives on each other and the real culprits have a day of their lives. Divide and conquer, isn't it? Yes. Divide. We have to stop that. We are one people with God's love, and we need to come together and realize that the real culprits are these incompetent twins. Okay. They are masters of their game. Oh, yes. And, they, and their game is to just create a deception. And they have done that very well. And every so often, they throw in a little bait, like free SHS. And people get, hey, free SHS. You but that's because that's how, uh, to be honest, for me, one of the things we can do for our people is a change of the mindset. The mm. average, and I've been preaching this for a while, the day the average Ghanaian realizes that there is nothing like free lunch, that outcomes need to be changed by ourselves, for ourselves, when we Absolutely. begin things for ourselves, when mm. we can build our own local toilets, mm. when a Tishan doesn't need to pour. I mean, coronavirus came and you can see people putting their pictures on bread, bread to take to communities. It's because our people actually don't expect better. Mm. People want freebies. People don't want to do things for themselves. And the politician, as I've always said, I'm a politician's daughter. My family, every side of my family is political. My mom's wow. side, Yeah. I mean, look in your evil twins and you'll find a lot of my... Every government, you will find a cousin of mine, a minister. Because it's wow. the country I come from. I am very political and I've been predicting what will happen with the economy and a few things with some accuracy that people don't quite understand, especially with the MPP. They play textbook politics, so you can predict them. You can predict them. COVID or no COVID, the games they were playing were geared towards the Ghanaian scene change and improvement between March and about August, September. And then everything which happened in the past will be totally forgotten because the Ghanaian doesn't really remember anything long-term. Mm. And that really is what we ought to challenge if we want things to change. It's the mentality. You do your own things. You empower your own self. You do things for yourself. And then you demand what a government really there you should go. offer you. Mm -hmm. Now, Joyce has put a question, which I, I will take Joyce's question before I move on to my next one. She says, I'm going to ask him if he would consider joining heads with Mr. Uh, Gain, the other political presidential candidate. 
the other mm. independent presidential candidate. I apologize. So it's Marek Gan. Would yeah. you be interested in? I in am interested in joining hands with anyone who has Ghana's well-being at heart. Come along, come one, come all. Let's all come together and do this. Listen, I don't have to be the lead person. I could be the water boy for Ghana. Make me anything, but please, let's take Ghana from the hands of these incompetent twins, for crying out loud. So bring everybody that you can onto this thing. The only reason why I am running, because I didn't see anybody running who was serious at the time that I made a decision to, you know, make a consideration. But now I know there have been a couple of people who have come up. Let's come together. Let's get this thing done. It's not about Kofi Kranton being present. It's about us coming together to save our nation. That's what it is. Okay. And Adia Pena uncle also says, ask him, I'm going to ask him what he would do different with regards to road construction, road marks, accidents on our road, and the sickening hospital system. Okay. So I'm a, let, me, let me make it very easy for everybody else. And I want you to listen to me very carefully, everybody. You see, road construction, road maps, all, these are all what I call the adaptive uh, 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 symptomatic sociological response. Okay, and the reason is these are all symptoms of a bigger problem. Yeah. Your road is not the problem. No. Corruption is not the problem. Your hospitals, your healthcare is not the problem. All those are symptoms. The real problem and the only problem Ghana has is leadership. Okay. Once you change the leadership, all the symptoms are tackled from the root cause. Everything falls in place. You see, now, when you go and you just, and this is what the governments of NDC and MPP have been doing. Oh, uh, we need roads. They go and attack a road. Uh, we need hospitals. Oh, they're going and tackle some part of the hospital. When you do that, it's called a reductionistic system. A, reduction, a reductionistic system does not, like I'm going to use a word that I love, it's not holistic. A reductionistic system just takes a piece of the puzzle and fixes it, but our problem is cancerous. So then what happens is in a matter of time, the whole process metastasizes again and becomes fully cancerous. So what you do is you take a holistic approach and deal with it from, a very, from the very basic point. When somebody is sick and they have cancer, and I hope nobody's going through that, and you take him to the hospital. Just uh, uh, chemotherapy doesn't solve the problem. Radiation doesn't solve the problem. You got to ask yourself, what caused the cancer? What caused the cancer is demineralization and toxicity. So if you want to get rid of the cancer, you deal with the cancer from a mineral deficiency and from a toxicity perspective. If you just give them chemo, guess what? The cancer comes back at some point. You understand me? The cancer comes back at some point. So you definitely don't want to handle problems reductionistically. We need to change the problem at the absolute fundamental level and its leadership. Once we get a different leader, a leader who thinks and loves Ghana, guess what? Everything will fall in place. Everything. You name it, it's in place. Because remember what it says. It says, a rising tide lifts all boats. Our problems are the boats. All we need is the person who creates the rising tide. And all our boats will be lifted. So Ghana, come along. Join us. Agenda 2020. Visit us on our website. Kofikaranting.com, www.kofikaranting.com. Register with us and let's fight because even though we think the, a good 
country with all the frills and bells and whistles uh, deserving of us, uh, it's not going to come to us if we don't fight. We need to go out there and fight. We need to go out there and clamor it. We need to tell or talk to all our friends about this. We need to bring all our friends together. We need to share this on our Facebook, Twitter, uh, Twitter. Um, uh, everywhere we go, we need to share the story of Kofi Quarantine coming together with like-minded people to uh, free Ghana from these incompetent twins. Because not unless we do, then what happens every day is we go back and the cycle starts all over again and the incompetent twins continue with their masterful display of deception and we suffer. Right. It's wonderful. I apologize. I lost internet for like a minute. Nobody I had to knows. Work. Nobody yeah. knows. I know because I saw you flowing and like, right, guys. I've seen a few questions. I will catch up with your questions in a minute. But Kofi, let me ask you about something I am passionate about. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's education. So I live at the moment in the United Arab Emirates. The reason why I left the UK and came to the UAE was because I got interviewed by the Minister of Education himself. Mm -hmm. Now this guy shared their vision for education he told me Sheikh Zayed's dream and what they wanted to do for their people. And it was so exciting. I upstakes with my family and we came. I wanted to support. I wanted to help. And I wanted to push. And it was a very simple thing for me. He said to me that he was, uh, the Sheikh was tired of the West knowing it all and his people not. He was sick and tired of uh, the West using education over their people. And so they had taken that bold decision to take everything they can from the West to build themselves and to add their own values to it, to build something better, unique for their people. And in fact, since I've been here, about 30% of their work actually goes towards education. Mm. national budget, at least 30% of it mm. goes towards education. And it goes towards the cutting edge part of education. It Absolutely. goes into the most skilled teachers, the best. Mm. Right. It doesn't matter where you live. It really doesn't matter what your ask, uh, asking price is. They want you and they will get you here. Whatever it takes, you will be here. It is about putting uh, infrastructure in place so that when these people come, it is possible for their people to nick every skill they have off you whilst you are here, as long as you are willing to stay. So that when you've stayed your bit and you've moved, the people have already harnessed what you brought with you. It is about taking their people from here into the West, to experience the West, to familiarize themselves with their competitors, and then to return home and outcompete. Now, that was so exciting for me. What I would like to know is what your vision for education in particular will be. Well, thank you, Ama, because you just shared it right there in the last <laughs> two, three minutes. <laughs> okay, so uh, viewers, if you were listening, Ama just shared the whole vision. So did, uh, listen, I, I was laughing. I was like, okay, you've been reading my notes, Ama, or I've been reading your notes, one way or the other, because you just shared it. Ama, listen to me. We are behind. The reason why we are behind in a nation is because we don't have the skill set, yeah. the level of int intellect of everything around us. We don't practice in what I call functional learning. Yeah. Functional learning has to be relevant to your environment. Everything we learn is out of place. So we learn in a square environment and we want to fit that square environment into a round hole and it doesn't quite fit. And that's why there is so much waste in pretty much everything we do. So like you said, teachers and people in the field of learning, elevating consciousness are people that I adore because you see they're, create the foundation for the next wave of leaders 
who are going to take on this country to the next millennium. So our teachers are under-resourced, underpaid. They have no respect. Oftentimes, they're waiting for their salaries two, three months out. Yeah. They don't have places where they live. Uh, come on. So in our proposal, what we plan on doing now is we want to give teachers the best of the best. We want to resource them. We want to create, because it's another thing too. See, life, for you to be able to function as a human being and, and, and work properly and give, everything about your life has to be balanced. So we are actually concerned, even with the teachers, we even have a plan that we put them through a training program where we not only control their thinking, but find out what their um, outside curriculum activities are that affect their life and, and, and work with them. Maybe they're going through some problems at home, whatnot. We have counseling service for our teachers. You know why? Because we want to make sure that by the time they get to the classroom, they are the best of the best. Exactly. So that they become the master copies. That's the master copy program, the MC program, because you see, it, the teacher can, the teacher duplicates themselves. So for them to duplicate themselves, we want to make sure that they are the best copy of themselves before they duplicate themselves, because the child has to take the best copy and become the best that they can be. So we want to, you know, I was speaking to um, a gentleman from tech a couple of months ago. Uh, and they were talking about how their, 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 they, their groups have to take turns and go into the lab because they don't have even the equipment. Like they don't have, oh, they don't have the equipment. They don't have the computers. That's always been. Uh, That's always you see? Been. New development. That's always been. So, so that blows my mind because then a lot of the stuff they read in textbooks, they don't even actually have the stuff. But then we nope. have, we have, 90,000, 100,000 SUVs, six of them in one driveway for one minister. So you see where the priorities are so blown away. So we want to have, we want to pay for the best of the best. You know, one of the things that we're going to do, uh, Ama, is we are actually going through a plan right now that we're going to go through the whole world. We're going to have a team of people going through the whole world recruiting the best teachers. Yeah. Will be a good start and giving them and and let me let me let me give you this thing you you gonna you gonna you gonna salivate you're gonna salivate at this thing so let's just say Amar is a teacher we come to you in the uh, uh, Emirates right or you know uh, uh, we come to you and we say okay Amar how much are you getting paid we negotiate with you you accept the terms and then uh, you send a sheet of paper to a secretariat because we're going to have a secretariat that deals with that, right? And you tell us everything about yourself and what you want, where you want to live. You want to live in Tamale. You want to live in Ho. You want to live in Accra. In choices. We pick that up um, and then with all your stuff that you're going to bring, we don't want you to go through the headache of going to the Tama port and going through bringing your family. We streamline everything. You work with, we assign you with a rep who you're going to work with in terms of your shipment. When it gets to Tema, they're going to have special clearance. They're going to deliver it to your door, and you're going to pay a fraction of the fees so that the, you coming into Ghana is the most pleasant, favorable experience so that if you have to tell your other friends about coming to Ghana, it would be easy for them to do that. Right now, we don't have – all we do is, I'm going to come to Ghana. How are you going to come to Ghana? You're not going to come to Ghana. You know, we're going to give, and then we're going to have a place for you to live, peace of mind with security, because we know that you are our biggest asset. It's a, there's an interesting model. I would definitely invite you when things come to come here and I will let you experience how it works. For me, when I was recruited, it was interesting. The recruitment process was done. Everything to do with my entire family and I coming here. Everything. Fire. Everything. Everything. All I had to do was send them a picture, my passport, um, and a few things, 
and everything was done, it was a case of you turn up to your email and there is your ticket and there's everything else. Isn't when that beautiful? When you turn up to the airport, there's somebody actually there with your name waiting for you and a few SUVs. That's what I'm talking about. That's waiting. what I'm talking about. And this is just an ordinary teacher. There was nothing special about it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of SUVs outside waiting to transport to a decent hotel, get you settled for two weeks, move you around, sort what needed to be sorted, make sure you found your accommodation and you hit the ground running. There you and go. It became an attractive place for people to come. Absolutely. And if you attract the best, you will have to make sure that the package is competitive. I really Absolutely. that for Ghana to actually move beyond where we are at the moment, one of the things we need to be looking at is linguistic control. Absolutely. The thing is, linguistic control is best done by some natives. And we have many Ghanaians who are native speakers in many different places of English. And if we found people skilled enough and native speakers and we found packages to encourage them to come home, we would, we would create an environment where kids actually experience the spoken language, the way it is done internationally. And when you are immersed, I am watching, I've been here five years now, and the kids, when I first arrived, could barely string a few sentences together. Having been here five years, I am actually seeing kids who speak fluently, close enough to wow. a native. In wow. five years, that was presenting itself wow. to me. When these kids now go to universities or they go to conferences or they deal with people internationally, there is no longer marginalization mm. because of the control. Wow. Wow. That's, that's, that's a success story to be proud of. It's a success story. It definitely would be one I would recommend for you to have a look at, see what model they've put in place. It's not perfect, just as nothing is. But maybe the model might guide some things to influence what we could do for our people. Absolutely. <laughs> but listen, and, and listen, I, I looked at the German model also that there are pieces of bits and pieces of the German model that we like. So we're going to include that yeah. in this whole system. But That's the so thing cool. is, listen, it's about making these teachers feel awesome, making them feel great. And when you do, you will get the best people into Ghana. See, I don't know about me, but I like, I like things to be the best. I don't know. It, it's got to be the best. There's no second place in my book. You with me? So if we want Ghana to uh, uh, quantum leap to the front, we have got to get outstanding in everything. And I tell you, Amma, you see, everybody talks about how impossible it would be to change Ghana. And I say, because you don't understand. You see what I'm saying? If you see, it's easy for me to sell it to you because you've experienced it. Oh, but, but to some, a teacher in Ghana, if I talk to them about this, they would say, oh, you know what I'm saying? But then because they haven't for seen it. Ghana, for a teacher in Ghana to believe anything you say. And this, this is one of the things. About 18 months ago, I actually walked into a place with a lot of the technocrats and the people who make the decisions. And I said to them, I am here. I, I am here consulting for people in this place. I will happily do it for free in Ghana in a consultancy uh, role. Mm -hmm. Ask whether anybody has taken me up on that one. Nobody has. They are busy buying their SUVs and flying their girlfriends on first class tickets around the world. I mean, seriously. I mean, it's, it's a shame we could do both, couldn't we? Uh, no. <laughs> you can't do that because that's somebody else's money. Let's put it in the economy. Let's elevate. Listen, I know I'm a zero tolerance person. So no, no, I'm not asking us to tolerate. I'm just saying, even for them, even okay. if they were doing that, I was offering it for free. So it okay. was not. You went in the SUV purchase in any Got way. you, got you, got you. It, 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 it was not influencing anything. It, it's a free offer, which was not even taken. Yeah. Free offer yeah. that was taken. So education. And, 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 but, but you know what? It's funny talking about a free offer. Even if you offered yourself for free, we don't have the infrastructure to take you on. Where are you coming to live? Chocolate or, or where? I was not I even mean, for any of that coffee. What it was, was at the time, 
So I'm a doctoral candidate. I'm actually researching educational technology. That's what my doctorate will be when I finally get it. And because mm. I was working on it, I've actually managed to get a few liaisons with some of the edtech giants. Mm. It's what happens that one of the biggest ones who we all use here to change outcomes for kids happened to be the course mate of the owner of Ashesu or Ashesu mm -hmm. University. Ashe Ashe University with, uh, uh, doc I mean, uh, uh, with pro uh, Professor Nyapo and... Uh, his name, but I want. I walked in, I was negotiating a contract with this guy, and he says, Hey, you said you're from Ghana. Oh my god, the owner of this place is my friend. You know what? Because of that, I would happily offer. And they were actually offering free access to one of the greatest impacting tools for teaching and learning. And I actually passed it on to people wow. I was expecting to do something with, and wow. it hasn't, it really hasn't. So it wasn't, what I was offering was not asking to come live in trouble. It was just giving tools that people had given to me free. And mm. that offer still stands, which is very interesting. Mm. The last time I asked him, he said the offer still stands. Nana, we are reading comments, but we have to find a balance between the two. Education is one I can talk to Kofi for 50 years. So there's been a lot of problems with Ghanaian teachers vis-a-vis -vis licensing. Have you followed that uh, debate by any chance, Kofi? Absolutely, absolutely. One of the things that, and, and I don't know if you heard about the scandal, what it was is because um, a lot of the teachers were not, I would say, I'm being politically correct here, a lot of the old school teachers, because they had not gone through certifications and uh, upgrading uh, uh, to be up in time uh, uh, at a level of the new times were actually intimidated by them starting a new process uh, because they thought it was going to phase them out. So yeah. they actually made a call to the Ministry of Education uh, for them to abrogate that contract uh, so that they wouldn't have that certification, the new certification guidelines. And they bought into it because they, they threatened to, uh, I don't know what they were going to do, but to maybe disrupt uh, the natural course of events that were happening. So um, uh, it's sad, it's sad sadly, uh, they bought into that. And uh, for all we know, uh, this uh, certifications that they're supposed to have um, are not done at the level that it needs to be. So there are so many people who, and if you have spoken to a teacher lately, you would know they are really not, some of them are not really fit uh, to be in a position to be teaching our children. But then um, they are in the system because uh, maybe they were referred by a minister or somebody in the government who uh, felt the need to push them into that position. Uh, sometimes when I speak to them and they tell me they teach us, I cringe. Uh, because uh, the most basic of things uh, they don't have. But, you know, I don't want to go and blame the teachers. It's the system that has allowed them to be that. Now, of course, there are character issues. Don't get me wrong. But uh, people are people, and people will always default to the path that's of least resistance to them. So you have to create systems to stop people from resorting to that. And our leadership have not because they themselves take advantage. Uh, of the fact that uh, there is no infrastructure to sift out all the people who are maybe uh, uh, not good for uh, the, the trail. But do you uh, think the politician really wants the average Ghanaian to be educated and enlightened? But this is the whole thing. I mean, it goes into the narrative because this, this is their whole, this is the genius of their <laughs> masquerade uh, because, you know, we will always make it look as if we're making an attempt to fix a problem. But what we will do is actually uh, put together uh, a plan to exaggerate and to cause the problem to blow out of proportion. And in our fixing it, uh, create chaos and in the chaos, steal a lot of money, you know, and it's worked perfectly for them. And this is why Ghanaians need to take a, a, a back seat and realize that this whole thing has been uh, a masterfully planned um, uh, a cascading of events that's, that 
ultimately and always puts the politician in a position to take advantage of the Ghanaian people and we need to pull the plug on them. So that's, that's where we are. Let's explore some more. So we, we've sort of played with what is at the moment and the issues we see with what is. Kofi, what would you make different? I'm still staying in education and I'm asking you just a simple bullet point of the things you would make different and what, dif- what impact would that make on the average Ghanaian and our prospects? We will empower the teachers. We will empower the people in the field of education so that they could raise their game and they could affect our children. That's what we would do. We will empower them on you all levels. A little bit more about the kind of empowerment you've got in mind. Well, in changing their state of mind, um, uh, we, would, we will pay them more we will put them in uh, accommodations that are fit for teachers to live in. We will resource them at the school level and their home level. And we will incent them because, you see, one of the things that we've been very bad in doing is because um, we, don't, we, we need to get to a place where it's almost like an inspiration for people to want to rise up to the occasion to do things. And we haven't really created an environment to inspire uh, people to want to be teachers because they look at the teacher's lifestyle and there's really nothing to brag about. We, we're going to brag about our teachers because we're going to put them in a position in society where everybody would, will, 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 will want to be a teacher. Uh, you know, uh, we want to make, we're going to make teaching sexy again. How's that? We're going to make it sexy. <laughs> oh, it, it, it sure is, but not in Ghana. Somebody's asked the question. Let me just chip that in. Johnny, the same thing I said to the guys before, the same thing I would repeat to everybody else. For me, this is a legacy project. I have actually spent a long time in the classroom. I have definitely helped in other places to effect change. And it's the same thing. I, would, I don't know about being a minister of education because I'm not sure I want to restrict myself to a particular role. But I would give everything I have. I would give every skill I have. I will put all my experiences available to anybody who wants to take it. And I don't even expect a dime in return. Even if that was the condition, I will. Even if that was the condition, I will. And, and, and Ama, to cut you off, to, for everybody who's listening, and I know you guys love Ama, uh, let's fight so that we become president. And when we are president, we're getting Ama to Ghana and she's going to be involved in education. I, pr- I promise you that. We are going to get Alma. You, listen, even if I have to kidnap her, I'm going to kidnap her to bring her to Ghana. Okay, no, so. Willingly. Honestly, Alma will come willingly. I, I'm, Alma will give you everything I have. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so I much. You want to change. So one of the things which this is, like I said before, it's a legacy project for me. My dad was heavily involved in the SH, uh, GSS, SSS change. That project was not done to completion. It was abandoned in the middle somewhat, taken and changed at some point. And I still have the blueprint somewhere in his memoirs. Excellent. It's still the model of what was intended to be done, which was never done. I would like to, if I could share some of those things with the new developments that I have learned, to mm. effect a small change for our people even if it was just a small impact on the way our teacher training is set up. Because in my view, the problem starts from there. Mm. Teacher training and the way it's set up, the kind of people we recruit into teaching. Absolutely. This funny thing in Ghana, that people who drop out, people who are not able to maintain the academic rigor, or for whatever reason, come to the teacher they, training. They, they, throw the, they throw them to teach. Isn't that part? It's, it's incredible. It's right? not, it? But we do have a few. We do have many talented teachers who come in there. But this is the general perception of people who go into teaching. And because of that, it does not attract our best mm. talent. That's and true. Because it doesn't pay. I mean, that's the reason why it's the, at the level of the, 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 uh, the professional scale. It's, it's not so much what they're willing to give, but it's everything, how much they paid and they looked at in society. You know, uh, teaching is a throwback profession. You know, so if nothing else works, well, maybe uh, being a class two teacher will, 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 will you know, will suffice. 
uh, we need to change that. We got to be aggressive. Like I said, we're going to make teaching sexy again, where as we're going to recruit the best because they're the master copies of society. If we don't have teachers, how are you going to build uh, the, the, the leaders of tomorrow? You got to yeah. have teachers, you know? So we, we, we are going to put, so we're going to invest incredibly. Listen, one thing, um, a good friend of mine works at Google and uh, we talk about how they're, they, they, they are so different in the way they think and uh, how Sorry. they go about things in, in terms of development. And uh, a lot of the plans of how we're going to do, uh, bring the, recruit the best people into Ghana, uh, but just so you know, Amma, so you can understand the thinking. We have right now assembled the best of the best, the physicists, uh, the, the chemists, sociologists, engineers, mathematicians, sociologists, uh, nature paths, um, uh, and ma mathematicians, engineers. We have, we have them right now. What we're going to do is the moment we get uh, uh, to the helm, uh, we are going to put out to the whole of Ghana our 20, 30, 50 year game plan for Ghana, the, the Ghana development plan. And what we're going to do, we're going to segment that plan uh, into sections. And for every section, we're going to build systems for it. Uh, and the systems are going to be very specialized systems where everybody who goes into it is going to be specialized. And education is one sector that is heavy into that system. And if you take a look at everything we put together, it will blow your mind the amount of investment that's going into it. Uh, but there's so much money in Ghana that's to be made. So when people ask where you're going to get the money, the money's already there. It's just going to somebody else's pocket, you know. So what we're going to do is we're going to be rerouting all that money where the accounting general says is going towards corruption about three, four billion dollars. And we're not even, we haven't even touched the money coming from the ports yet. We're going to put that money uh, into education and healthcare uh, and uh, building schools, uh, uh, building uh, uh, middle uh, income jobs like uh, artisans for the youth so that they can know how to be good at stuff. Uh, even they, everything they do in Ghana, people do off the cuff. We got to change that off the cuff mentality and put signs to what we do. So even if it's you cutting hair, you're making hair, you got to understand the textures of the hair, what different temperatures you need, apply what chemicals, you, you know, it, it, there's a science to everything. So that middle income part, we're going to put a lot of science into it to develop people so people can start taking care of themselves. And by that doing, um, increase the tax in it from a 39% to about 90% tau and put them in a position to be able to tax them and use the income, reinvest the income back into it. It's not that difficult. I mean, uh, come on. Ooh. What, what, what is this? Right. Oh, no, give, I me a, give me a break already. I mean, this is not difficult. Anybody could do this. If you have the will, you have the will to do the right thing for your people. But when people are kind of amazed and they asking, uh, oh, the, the, how are you going to do this? Where's the money? I'm like, really? Do you know what's going on in Ghana? It hurt that there is no money and it's been the track for so long that at some point it just beats it into your psyche and you sort of believe it at the background. But Blessed has put a question I have put on the screen mm -hmm. and I'm going to go there. Who is funding Brakufi, she says. Ooh, oh, yes. thank you. I, 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 I was praying that somebody would ask me that question. <laughs> thank you, blessed. I love you already. <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, you are funding me. That's why I'm waiting for your money, okay? Fund right. me. Fund me. How okay. We uh, well, if you go on a website, www.kofikranting.com and click on the donate button. It gives you access to PayPal um, and you can use PayPal. They are uh, triple encrypted uh, 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 um, uh, uh, gateway for payment. Uh, and you can use that. Uh, we, if we, once we get to Ghana, we're, in a, we're going to Ghana and then uh, Bra Corona hit us at the airport and we had to come back. <laughs> so for right now, Bra Corona has gotten us, okay? But 
when Corona gets out of the way, we're going to be in Ghana. We're going to set up uh, 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 money, uh, mobile money uh, for people in Ghana to be able to also help us. But for now, you could uh, do um, uh, uh, PayPal on uh, kofikarantin.com on a donate button. So apart from those of us who are funding, I mean, we will donate the chicken change we have. So assuming we put ours in, and that doesn't quite come to the significant numbers that Kofi needs. Where else does the funding come from? Well, right now, I'll be very honest with you. Um, the, the funding has come from me personally and friends of mine who are sympathetic to what we're doing. We haven't, and I'll be very honest with you because this is public information, and I want you to know that this is also why our campaign is different because we want you to know that not unless we are the point where we are funding our own change. The change that we want is based on the effort that we put into our pot, we take out of our pockets. We're always going to be at the mercy of somebody waiting on the side to give us a check so we could give them back concessions. And we don't want to do that. Uh, that's, I'm a, that's, yeah, exactly. Because we do know that uh, most of the problem we have in our politics is actually from the funding. It's from the financiers. The demands mm -hmm. of the financiers always have to be met because you have an agreement with them, particularly if you intend to go beyond one term. So we want to know, are there any hidden financiers we should know about? No, <laughs> not yet. Now, let me just say this, though, Amma. If any of your viewers uh, in your good heart want to donate very handsomely to this course, please get with us. Go on a website and donate, okay? But I want you to know that... Uh, Hango Hankam. No, 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 no. No Hango Hankam. <laughs> Han <laughs> well, actually, there is Hango Hankam, but the Hango Hankam is going to be, we're going to see a beautiful Ghana. That I promise you. I, I promise you that. Listen, this thing is all about pride, that Ghanaians are good enough that we could do this, okay? Uh, because we take a look around, all you can see is Ghanaians are the best of the best, uh, doing what they're doing. So we could come together and certainly do it for ourselves. Okay, we just don't want anybody to come in and throw big money at us so that they could, uh, the whole cycle starts all over again. And that's why these political parties always get themselves in trouble. We want you to fund our change. The change we're looking for has to be funded by us. Ama, as many Ghanaians as there are in Ghana who are following you and who are willing to be part of this thing, if everybody just chipped in 10 CDs or $10 or 10 pounds. Well, this thing is done. Because let me tell you this, folks, the money, you need money because you need to use the arteries to get to people to prove a point for them to vote for you. If the person makes a decision to vote for you, then you don't need as much money. Right? We don't need any money except that there are villages where we need to pay people to get to. They need to, you know, we need to put banners. I think a lot of our financing with politics, like I, I said before, it's got to do with the changing of the mindset. Mm. People expect you to come and donate 5,000 at their funerals and to come and give X and to come and give Y. And I've always said to people, that's the reason why people come into power. And the MPs Common Fund never does anything because it was actually spent before the election was done. Mm. The person financed themselves with loans and whatever. And it's your Common Fund which is going to repay those things. That attitude of people expecting money to be given to them in return for their vote is the one thing we've got to contend with. Mm. And if we're able to do that, if we are able to even scratch at that mentality, we should see change easier. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's what I'm, I'm begging everybody watching to say, you know what, let's make a change. I promise you, uh, go on the website and take a look. And if you think we're not in a position to bring change to Ghana, don't even bother. But I promise you, uh, we've, we've worked in the environment. Uh, we've worked at Corporate America for long enough. Uh, we have uh, uh, owned our own business. I'm an entrepreneur. We've worked at corporate America. We, I've been involved in 
uh, formulating systems uh, for how uh, company structures work uh, as an investment banker. Um, and I understand this thing, okay? And plus, don't let anybody fool you. It's not that difficult, okay? All you need to do is to have the will to do the right thing. So don't think that you have to have some type of super brain to be president. That's not true. You just have to have the political will and you have to surround yourself with the absolute best people, one of whom is Amma. Uh, and, and once you do that, uh, th that's really it. I mean, there, listen, uh, there are uh, a lot of people watching, a lot, a lot of people watching right now who I can without a doubt, say that they know more than I do, okay? So it's not about so much what you know. You have to have the judgment to make the right decisions as to surround yourself with the right people. But once you know that, um, look at Obama. I mean, not to say he was a great president, but you, you just need to surround yourself with the very best. And we have that in our arsenal. So you just need to help us get there. You know, so that we can, number one, put to institute a national development plan, overhaul the Constitution and put together a fresh, new, robust Constitution, enforce law and order, you know, uh, put our youth to work, uh, uh, appoint 20 ministers, only 20 ministers. Okay, not 100 and whatever. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lost count. So I you can't count. Can't. Yeah. Okay, 20 ministers, 20 ministers. It's about effectiveness, not quantity. Effectiveness is the name of the game. Okay, uh, and that's what we want to do and have a flat rate uh, uh, um, import tax so people can come home with all the things they've accumulated over the years, uh, bring to Ghana and start new lives uh, as they want with their families. So what we look at, abolish X crash also, if I, I think I said that. So these are, these are things that we want to do off the cuff. And if you go on our website, you will see that. And uh, these are things that really uh, it touches Ghanaians at the heart. And that's why we're not developing. We have given these incompetent twins way far, way too much uh, 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 time of our lives. And we have to cut them off. And that's what we're willing to do. Now there's another one, same blessed, thrown another bombshell. And she's oh, asking, blessed. Okay, now let's go to blessed. Go ahead. <laughs> how is he going to decentralize Accra and how long did it take? That's, these are easy questions. Uh, give me tough questions. The way you decentralize Accra is because you see, the reason why everybody, why do you think everybody's in Accra? Everybody's in Accra because that's where everybody thinks the beef is, the cheese is in Accra, at least that's what people think. So they come to Accra to enjoy the cheese. So all you need to do is to have a system where you equitably, equitably split resources to all the regions and then incent people for the really downtrodden regions that need people, you double incent them. So. If let's say their farmers, let's say Upper East, there's Upper East have lost their population have uh, to Accra, let's say 60% uh, of the, or the youth left Upper East. All you do is you incent everybody who sets up a business. You incent them. So if you set up a business, I'll give you a, a small business loan to set up a business in Upper East. Everybody runs back to Upper East and you populate the place again. It's that simple. It's a, and then... You, you see, the reason why the best of everything is in Accra, we need to stop that. We need to put the university, every region has to have universities, have to have all the institutions from kindergarten all the way up, right, yeah. to university level, has to have businesses, has yeah. to have factories, have to have hospitals, have to have uh, uh, protection of uh, uh, what people work hard for. Okay, to guarantee them some standard of living. If you do that, most people don't truly don't like to come to Accra. No. Right know? now, we have another one. And yeah, I, I, I like this one. He says, what does Kofi think about the Chinese influence? And take oh, over? don't get, listen, <laughs> I, I, don't get me started. Do He's not done. get me started. Because <laughs> let me tell you, man, 
that is a passion of mine. You don't even want to know that one. You have I to call me on the, you. You have to call me on the phone for that one because I I will not be politically correct if I were to say what I feel. Okay, trust me. Be uh, This and is serious. Why I ask you that question? What are what, what are your thoughts? Give us a scratch of it. Okay, so uh, man, I have to be very careful. Um. I, I hate what is happening. I really, it's, it's too painful when I see uh, Ghanaians being brutalized. You know, uh, I'm a, uh, you know, about half an hour, 40 minutes ago, you had asked me a question about uh, what I imagined for Ghana, the new yeah. Ghana. Yeah. And I talked to you about a little child growing up, she sees success around them. You know, we've been made to feel so inferior, and I, I take that very personally, that everywhere we go, everybody sees us as inferior. Uh, in New York, there are doctors, there are nurses, there are professionals, Ghanaian professionals here, and all over the world, but you know what? Nobody respects you. No. Nobody regards you. You know why? Because your government does not respect or regard you, because if they did, they would not treat you the way they do. They will really care for you. They will really put the resources of the country to elevating the kids and growing them up. And like you said, putting it towards education and giving to the teachers so they could build the next wave of leaders. Our leaders have neglected us. Our leaders have made us think that giving us free is helping us, but giving us free is an entitlement. It weakens us as a people because it makes us dependent. We don't want to be dependent. We want you to give us the resources and the opportunities for us to excel and elevate ourselves so that we can make decisions for ourselves as to what is good for us. Don't give it to me for free. Give me an opportunity to earn so I can decide if I want it or not. And that's the difference. That's okay. why I cannot stand a Chinese because they're in our country benefiting. And then when we go to their country, they treat us like crap. Not only the Chinese, like, <laughs> listen, they, don't get me started. Don't, don't get me going, man. Because with a passion, Ghana is the only place foreigners come and they treat us like garbage. Listen, when I go to Osu to fix my air conditioner, the roads are closed and I ask the, the mechanic, why, why are the roads closed? And they tell me, oh, the Lebanese have closed the roads so that their children can play. I was like, are you kidding me? They closed the roads so that their children can play and it, it deprives our children? Really? That's how it, it's, it's got to be because they have paid so much money to the government or to some minister or to some official. So they think they have the right to close our streets to deprive our children. Listen. When I am president, Ghanaians are going to be first class all over the world. Even if you did not like it, I'll make you first class. <laughs> you you right. don't even understand. This is a passion. I like the passion. Uh, Seth Boachi Dankwa has also thrown one that I want to throw to you. He says, where is Kofi going to source his right people? Because we've heard it all before. And he says he's skeptical. We've heard it. We've got the men. We've got the right people. We've got... Where would your right people come from? I know. I... Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. And, and yeah, the past government has made it very difficult for us to use certain... <laughs> when you say you got to be careful. You got to be careful when you say you got the men. So I'm not saying I got the woman. How's that? I got the woman. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not the same as the previous government. I, so, but listen, in all honesty, if you want to do well, and if you want to do it with a group of people who are at the A game of their craft, you got to get them from somewhere. Well, all people, over the world. Let me interrupt you for one second. Sure. Let me cross more. It's folks like you who make life very difficult. You know, you grab onto a concept and because you grab onto a small concept and you become myopic about it, you also forget your manners whilst you are at it. I'm sorry. In Ghana, she is not the only language we speak. There's at least 46 of them. 
just so you have it noticed. So speaking to you here doesn't make it accessible to other people. It looks to me that you've not managed to look at wider access, that you're fixating on one small thing and thinking that's the center of the universe for you. And I do not accept that kind of behavior when you are here. So if you're still here, you owe me an apology. I demand it. And the gentleman or the lady in you should actually rise to that. That was disgraceful. You should be ashamed of yourself. Sorry, Kofi. I had to pick that one up. Why? Well, what I happened? This guy says, so can't y'all speak in chief? You're talking to Ghanaians, not Americans. That did not annoy me. And he finishes his off with Kwasi Asempa. It's the Kwasi Asempa. <laughs> uh, Masa, who be a question? Who throw a team? Who be a can was seven? Who throw a team? So kind of brofum. Um. Oh, it's uh -huh. it. What kind of brofum? Why don't I come a team? So it's difficult. Brofum, you want northness, you want hours, you want gas, you want the other, the other, Ghana, Obia, Kanekasa. Obian so or tea a year crown or to brofu crank, yeah, cannot brofu said you be a bin ye be a tea. Way cross your same band the womb. Minia. Yep, Ghana in your penny ye, he, I mean, can't say Minia or say cross your same qua. Say Brunin were finny crow, my bat to send a Chinese if we good gun So, ah, woman buyeno. Any day, young cast woman catch you. Meboa, your ministers, no, eh, more mus, one more air ton, your crow, no, ama, one more, meboa. Yen cast a woman catch you. Brony, no, one ban, rabbit do gana, no, say, watch on, who named Jina baby, what a cram more, no, did dear, would you let you friend say, oh, Brony, did you deserve a shop or ho? Won't cast your own catch you, and son, one more, Juma. A me, a me, me, cast you be a betty be near dear, my crow, no sooner. Me, cross your semqua. What do you have for? You know, sometimes. I intentionally pick these people up because there's a new wave of the new intelligent Ghanaians. This is what I call, I call them the new wisdom guys. They've only just realized that there is wisdom, all right? And because they've only realized there's wisdom, they think wisdom is a single pot. They don't realize that wisdom has multiple hats. There are many perspectives you can see a lot of things in. Yes, you can fixate on speaking cheap. But what about the Ewe man? What about the Kasim man? What about the Gaman? Do they not have the right to listen? And whether you do know it or not, our official language remains English. So please, let's move on. I apologize, for this, but I had to pick oh, that one. No, no, don't worry about it. It's okay. Listen, uh, if, you, if you're watching this and you're upset that we're in, in English, don't be upset. The bottom line is, listen, we all want Ghana to elevate its game, okay? So... Whatever you can, the, the focus should not be on the language that I'm speaking. The focus should be on how you think you could bring your speciality to the fold so we could bring it together and we could elevate ourselves. So don't worry about the culprit. It's not me or I'm speaking English. Yeah. It's the ministers and the officials who are ripping us off clean or we wouldn't even be here. OK, so don't don't be upset. Let's 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 focus on the real deal. Focus on the majors. Not the minors. I have I'm a major a on the screen yet again from your girl, blessed beyond belief. She says, what does he think about comprehensive sexual education in the curriculum? Okay, good one. Now, uh, your friend is saying, who, who, oh, it's from blessed? Blessed beyond belief, same one. Okay, okay, so blessed. Let me, let me, this is what I'm going to say, and this is my, the attitude that I take. I don't believe that it should be a position where the government is going back and forth on it. I think it should be between the person who decides on the uh, on that sexuality, uh, their parents, their loved ones, and their uh, faith leaders. They should make a decision as to which way they want to go. But now let me say this. Blessed, whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not, at least about close to 30% of the population feel or are of a different gender than you think, okay? Uh, they have a sexual orientation other than what you think they have. It's a fact, about 30% of every population. So now we have to ask a question. Because, you see, I'm a business person, so I always ask these questions and I look at the business aspect of things. But this is what we got to ask. 
would you rather a person who may be uh, uh, have a different sexual orientation or would you rather have a murderer or an armed robber who's willing to kill you? What do you think is more of a problem in a society? To me, if a person, whatever a person decides that they want to be sexually is up to them and their God and their loved ones and their family, I think we need to focus and, like I said, elevate, rise, uh, 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 raise the level of the water so the boats will all rise at a high tide. That's my responsibility. What she's Whoever asking this is about the curriculum. She's asking about the curriculum. So no, the, 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 you, the curriculum, I don't think the curriculum needs to be affected. And this is why I say that. You cannot decide on a curriculum for a few to affect the curriculum of everybody. Okay. And uh, uh, people of that sexual orientation are about 30%, if, if that. And I, we cannot change a whole curriculum. Uh, uh, now, if a person were to show that they had special needs to that, I think we don't need to, as a society, push them to the side. I think it needs to be addressed in a special situation. But I don't think we need to ignore them or kick them to the side because just the fact that they are different. So that's, that's what I, I believe in that. Let me dwell on that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I'm, I'm one of the advocates for the sexuality in curriculum because mm -hmm. I am also one of the people who know that a lot of parents and families have failed a long time ago. Mm -hmm. There are many children who are not receiving this education at all. There are many children who are not receiving awareness at all. There are there many children who are getting abused because some basic conversations are not happening from I'm the people who participate mm -hmm. with those. And that's a fact in our community. It's been a fact for a long time. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, because the families, the faith systems, the homes are failing, it then becomes a government's job to make sure that at least some fundamentals are taken care of. I am not looking at sexuality education. I think that's what a lot of people misunderstand. It is the comprehensive education. Education, absolutely. Well, as far as... Yeah, so you're absolutely right. Uh, as far as the education level, absolutely. I think... Uh, everybody needs to be educated as to what is out there so that we, we, we know how to deal with people who have. Uh, uh, so absolutely, I think the education should be out there for everybody to have it uh, first hand because uh, like you rightfully said, uh, the parents are not having these conversations because number one, uh, they did not come from that um, uh, background where conversations uh, this sensitive uh, can be had uh, in, in a home environment. So. Uh, and, and you have to look at, listen, it, it's, it's your son, it's your daughter, but it's our citizen as a nation. So when they do well, we all benefit. If they do poorly, it affects us. So you should look at it from the, a person who's a leader that you need to empower them, help them every way possible for them to elevate, to understand what options are available to them and for them to understand uh, what they're dealing with uh, so that they'll be able to fit and express themselves also uh, in a manner that's consistent with uh, uh, what, what they feel. So you're absolutely right. Okay. Now, Yabakujo has one which I'm picking up next. So I was one of the first people who threw out where's the manifesto, if you remember. Where is the yeah, manifesto? I do. I do. I want to see where the manifesto is. I like to see things in black and white. So Yaba is asking the same thing. She wants to see a manifesto. She wants to see a detailed plan. And she wants to see some financials. Where would she go? And is it available publicly right now? Absolutely, Yaba. It's uh, on, again, kofiquarantine.com. Uh, number one, a uh, couple of things. I don't, and we don't believe in manifestos, okay? Because the manifestos, um, people come in and they put together a lengthy, uh, you know, uh, over overstated document uh, with so many promises and uh, none of them really actually address even 20% of what's in the manifesto. So what we did was we took a different approach, 
uh, we looked at Ghana, we looked at things, uh, uh, you know, that uh, policy positions that we think are close and dear to Ghanaians, and we hit them right on and said, these, excuse me, these are issues, these are what we're going to address. And in, in that short period of time, uh, four years, we want to put ourselves in a position to be able to address these positions. And uh, if you take a look at, go on our website at policy at a glance, uh, yeah. you would see uh, all these policies there. So these are things that we know in a four-year period, we're going to be able to address them all. So you have a policy at a glance and not a manifesto? No, we don't have a manifesto. Okay. Another one on the screen from Hannah Hagan. She says, please, why don't you help the president with your ideas to build huh. the country, please, before you be a president? They don't want us. Don't you understand? Listen, you got to understand how this works. <laughs> uh, listen, that, it, it breaks my heart. Ekufuado is not the saint that you guys think he is, okay? He's the head of a criminal organization. Take my word for it. He is, and he knows he's the head of a criminal organization. So do not think that the MPP is out there to save Ghanaians. That's not what they're there to do. They're there as a criminal organization to amass wealth for themselves. If you do not understand that, then maybe you need to do some more research. But it should bother you, and it should cause you to ask questions that, why is it that if this thing sounds so good and so simple, none of the administrations before him have been able to do it? And why is it that if the NDC comes in and says the MPP are criminals, the MPP comes in and says the NDC are thieves, are corrupt and that, but nobody puts anybody in jail. Did you realize that? Why do you think that is? Criminal organizations. And we have given them, first of all, I've written proposals with my friends for Ghana government several occasions. They did not accept it. They did not accept it. We wrote a proposal for uh, the bank, the financial industry uh, collapse uh, with this uh, number one issue uh, in uh, 2013, 14. I went to Ghana. I sat with Wampa. 2014, I, th I think, 14, 15, somewhere when Wampa was the Bank of Ghana governor. I sat with Wampa. I gave him a document how we could be ahead of the World Bank standard, World Bank standard for financial compliance. They ignored. They said it was never going to happen. And then number one came and got them with all the, and they collapsed all these other institutions. They don't want to do it because it feeds into their agenda of ripping the country off when things are not working well. You got to understand this. Money is made when there is chaos. Chaos and this uh, organization uh, mismanagement is a lot of money for people. And they, they thrive on that. That's why they don't want to... We've made attempts to help the people. Listen, if the government wanted me to help, I would help, but they don't want my help. When I go to the embassy and they see me, they, they want to, they go the other way. They, they, they don't like me. <laughs> right. So there's another one from but Abigail. I'm sure everybody will say I'm a nice guy. Uh, okay. I know. I, I... No, people are actually saying that they've seen so many devils in uh, wolves in sheepskin. People are skeptical. I know. Too. No, they should be skeptical because if they were, we wouldn't have this. Uh, <laughs> Uh, th th this person for the president. So I think uh, people need to uh, be uh, uh, careful. But uh, guys, uh, this is our last chance. I honestly believe this is our last chance to really turn in this country back. If we don't make a serious move, uh, we might uh, have a failed state at our hands. I really believe that because listen, we just went and got a billion dollars uh, for uh, uh, for coronavirus, right? With uh, less than 100 people dead, why do we need a billion dollars? A billion dollars? And we got millions of money, millions of dollars from all the different countries too. America gave us, I think, 10.5 million. Uh, countries have given us million upon millions. What are we going to do with all that money? Nobody, we, we, we're not going to just distribute uh, uh, watching it, you know, 
Chibo, Chibo Mne, Angwamu, and uh, come on, that's not a billion dollars. Give me a break. Right, yeah. Abigail says, does Kovi have any plans for money from rich Ghanaians? Sending yes, sure. rich it's Ghanaians, the but no strings. Offshore placement. It's she's actually hinting at money laundering. She's hitting at offshore. Offshore is illegal. <laughs> so clean money. If somebody were clean, like uh, what's her name again? Who's who's asking that question? Her name is Abigail Sasu Champo. Abigail, if you have some clean money, we will take it without any strings attached. But if it's uh, you know. No, no, no. Right, Yaba, you are right. Yaba says, I don't think today is enough. Kofi, you need to come back to answer questions from the real voters. And really, if the real voters want to call late questions, today is an intro. I don't intend to, this to be the only time. I wanted you to meet Kofi. I wanted you to hear Kofi. And then you can throw your questions back out. And now we are all stuck indoors anyway. He can't go anywhere. I can't go anywhere. It, anyway, so... It's a huge opportunity to get to know him, to get him to respond to our questions before it all kicks off. Because once Corona is done, it will all kick off. And little girls like me will not get people to sit down for more than an hour to talk. So if you have you will always, Alma, you will always get me. Please, you will always get me. Yeah. So Hannah is still... Uh, inviting you to liaise with the government, but Kofi says this man is outlining the important points. Adia Pena says we should share and invite friends. It's nation building. We will have to do this together. Araba, you are welcome. She says she's particularly concerned with the loans and aid our country solely depends on. In her opinion, these don't help in any way. Sir, we have a lot of resources in Ghana and at least every region has it. How will you build wealth from within? I love you that. build you build health wealth with this. Resources are finite. If you keep depending on your resources, at some point you're going to zero out. This is what you build wealth is with. This myelin, the myelin between your te the two ears, the gray substance in there is what you build wealth is. You got to develop your human capital. And you develop your human capital by what Amma talked about in the stress today. We got to make sure that our teachers are being taken care of. We have an environment where people who are already successful can plug it into and be successful. We don't have a template. We don't have an infrastructure. We don't have a system for people who are already accomplished in their lives to plug in and work. We don't have one. So you create an environment that people can succeed in and they will come if the environment is right. And that's what we need to do. And we need to change our whole curriculum and uh, education system. My girls are throwing punches, and it's really good to see that. Yaba comes back again, and she says, what do you feel would be your biggest challenge as a president? Uh, my biggest challenge will Ghanaians get used to my style of leadership. <laughs> yeah, because it would be a whiplash. I'm sorry I said this, but people are going to be like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, no nonsense. Zero tolerance. It would be a, a rude awakening to a lot of Ghanaians that this guy really doesn't take um, exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Uh, I can't even use the words, but not with me. It's not going to happen. This is a no-nonsense person. I'm nails for... Um, I'm nails for... I have a next appointment coming on, so I got to... We'll hopefully end in the next few minutes uh, so we could go to... I just got a reminder on my phone that I, yeah. got, I got to get ready for my next... I was enjoying this so much. I know we've yeah. gone beyond the time we agreed. Like I said, it's something I would like us to do again. I am absolutely delighted you could join. What I would do is chat to the audience a little bit more when you're gone. Invite people to send questions. I might shoot some your way or I might even Please. pull it and invite Please. you to so, guys, join me in thanking Kofi. I can't tell you how delighted I am that he's given us a bit of time to get to know him. We wish you the very best, but we will ask you loads of questions. Bear with Please us. Please do. We are struggling to understand. It's with Please. the best intentions. We just want to understand. 
Listen, I, I wish I, I, we had the uh, time to do a million questions because that's, that's what makes me better. And that also gives me the opportunity to share what I have in mind. And also, uh, I get the feel and the sense from people and how we could tweak things. Uh, but I promise you what we have is pretty unique. Uh, the hearts that we have uh, going into this thing is special. Uh, and uh, we're going to do some, we're going to do some awesome. I'm telling you, Ghana, uh, listen, I'm, let me tell you, every night when I sit back and I look through my notes and I'm like, God, man, please just give me an opportunity to show these people. Because you see, we could change Ghana so fast and so beautifully. Um, I, I, I honestly believe, Amma, that people cannot conceptualize um, wh how Ghana could become like. No, it's too Japan. radical. It's too radical. We've not seen anything to suggest yeah. that's the problem. That's like, the problem. And, 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 Boy, I, I know. I, I know we could do this. I, I believe in my heart. This is not BS. Listen, let me tell you something. We're, go back, watch this video, and feel me out because I'm the feeling person. You know, when people talk, I like to feel them out. And see in your heart, in your mind's eye, if I am genuine. And if you truly believe if you truly believe that I am for real, you will feel it. If you think I'm just BSing you, you will know it. And, and I guarantee way, you, I'm not this is, this is the real deal. I didn't know the questions. I said to Kofi, and that was one of the reasons why I was really excited about this interview. Because most people, I haven't done a lot of interviews people want me to do because they want to give me a script. And I am not the kind of person who scripts. I just don't do it. I asked Kofi for an interview. He said yes. And I said to him, um, are you brave enough to go unscripted? And he says, absolutely. That excited me. That really did. Kofi, thank you so much. Can thank the you. Join me in thanking him for the time. Please rewatch the video. I will be back in touch maybe later. When Please you are do. Please do. And thank you, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. And let's talk again. Let's talk again. Sure. Thank Take you. Take care now. Bye-bye. And they are doing como. My regards to all of you. To be honest, I didn't want to speak she. Are you sure that uh, it's not one of those political sweet talks? Citizen justice. At the moment, you and I have heard exactly the same thing. I've spoken to Kofi. I'm going to have to sleep on it. I'm going to have to ponder on it. I'm going to have to watch the interview again. I'm going to have to read his body language. I am going to, the questions I threw at him were purposefully targeted to be random. I wanted it to be random. I wanted him to be uncomfortable. I wanted him not to be ready for anything, to give me something which is pre-constructed. I wanted it to be, and if you've actually followed this interview, when we asked him about the comprehensive sexual education and a few things, you should have known that it is not a scripted interview. It's not. I am trying to draw more other people in those of you who don't know me, when I came in 2018, I told you that I was here in preparation for election 2020. That was one of my most important reasons for coming to social media. I wanted to bring my brand, the way I do things. I want to scratch people under the surface and we are still, we're still working on it. Half Nipa, half Bosom. His intelligence is not questionable, not at all. His intelligence is not questionable. We just need to see where he's going. We need to make sure that he's thought it all through. We need to know that he actually does have a strategy and that the strategy might actually be viable. It's those things that we are trying to understand. His intelligence is without question. His experience, again, unquestionable. But we want to have a holistic view of the candidates. So those of you who know where Mr. Gan is, can somebody tell Marigan that Amma calls, Amma calls. Amma wants to have an interview. Amma wants to have a discussion. I want to get to know him. We all have to rewatch the video, Nyako. We really do. Yes, what I said, you have the puzzled look. We all should. We are a people who've been uh, abused over a long period of time. 
And for that reason, we've got to be very cautious. We shouldn't make decisions willy-nilly. We really need to interrogate things carefully before we decide. Uh, half Nipa Half Bosom says it's sad he's not on media. He needs to be doing videos so we can promote his ideologies. But after Kofi TV, you didn't see him again. I had that feeling too. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to draw him out. So those of you who have platforms, those of you who are able to conduct interviews, those of you who can draw people out, we do have huge platforms on social media. We have a lot of people who call themselves bloggers. We, we do really need to start tackling what is important. There are certain things which are getting a lot of traction on social media and they shouldn't. We really should become serious as a group of people. We should be reflecting on things. We should be challenging stereotypes. We should be questioning people and putting data out there so that when it comes to decision making, our people will make decisions based on knowledge, based on full disclosure. I noticed from here, and I tried, I tried so, so hard that I, I, I could ask him as many questions as I could. But unfortunately, the way it is, remember that this show doesn't have production assistance. I have no team. What you see on the screen and everything going on is actually being done by the one person also doing the interview. So yeah, some of the messages I did not get to, of course, I'm going to go back, have a look at those questions. I will throw them back at Kofi and I will invite Kofi to come back. Please share it. Please share it. Help Nipa, help Nipa help Bosom. Please share it for me. Please do. Uh, what I've said, he says, bless beyond belief, I'm not defending Anabu. The fact that the world is turning gender neutral fluid is irrelevant. You can go with that, but I don't want the government to do that for me. So you can teach your family those values. This is contentious. And yes, the next interview scheduled will be with the aspiring independent parliamentary candidate for Aguna East is Anthony Ni Ajete Aji. I will put details about when that interview happens. If you know any politician who is brave enough to come sit with me, and you really do need to be brave to come sit with me. Because one of the things I don't do is I do not work with your script. I will ask you any question that pops into my mind. And if you are a genuine person, you should be willing and capable of answering my question and doing so satisfactorily. Or I keep asking questions about it until I am satisfied with the answer I have received. So if you think that you, you, you can come and hold a discussion with me, then please do get in touch, reach out. I want to put information there. Definitely want to hold more interviews. I am open for that. I am inviting you. Adia Pena Uncle says, I'm a please. Next time, Kofi would need to give us not less than three hours. I would ask him. I would request it. But at this point, I would have taken anything and everything. It was better to get him to give us an hour and a half than not for the interview to happen at all. Silly. Hi. You want to talk to me? Okay. Silly, when I finish, please WhatsApp me. Let me put my WhatsApp number. It's 0044. 0044 So WhatsApp me. I will send you a link and we can talk. Okay. What well, I said is my absolute pleasure. I am so honored that he actually responded to the request. You like his ideas on systems. What we need in Ghana is a well functioning system. I agree. I couldn't agree some more. Uh, Sister Akosia Dakwa says he needs a force bar if he's going this 2020. Liberal Democrats are still struggling. But I think things have changed. This is what I said to you during this interview. Those of you who think, that the status quo in Ghana stands are kidding yourself. That power, that power base is already lost. Because of social media, there are a lot of Ghanaians consuming information from the West as if they lived there. People in Ghana know now what is acceptable elsewhere. People in Ghana are becoming more aware of what the government should be doing for them. People are becoming more empowered and less likely to be duped with things that are substandard to what is acceptable elsewhere. For me this week, the realization that majority of the people who view my videos are actually resident in Ghana is one of the things that gives me the greatest hope. Most of you, like me, thought 
that it was those of you in diaspora who watch my videos and the non-entertaining information you put out there, it is changing. It is changing. People at home are accessing content that I am putting out, content other people are putting out, and it can only shift expectation. It can only shift expectation. And it makes me very, very excited. It makes me very hopeful. For those of you who stayed from the very beginning, I am in awe of you. I cannot thank you enough. This is not entertainment. So it's difficult to stay on broadcast like that from beginning to the end. But it is these things that might change our future if we are able to move beyond entertainment all the time. And for that, I thank you sincerely. I am so grateful. If you have any questions, I put the WhatsApp number up. Let me pop it back on the screen. If you have any questions, if you want me to ask anything to anybody, if there is anybody you think I should interview, then suggest those people to me via WhatsApp. Feel free to also send it to me on Facebook and let's get the conversation going. And Anekuya Oye says, Ghanaians are tired of NDC and PP. You are praying for a new face of politics in Ghana. I wasn't clear about your explanation of the GCE. At what age or class does it need to be implemented? Nanekuya, that is a, a country-specific one. We will have to come to an understanding, an agreement as a group of people about what age we started. Some people started by year two. In England, a lot of you don't know. Your little kids in year one, year two already get a, a version of it. You know, some countries delay till later. Some people started quite early on. In some countries, it's actually in the early years program. So Ghana will have to have a dialogue and we decide what works for us as a collective. We must stop the comparisons. It's not done even in the States. I have kids in the elementary school and can't recall any assignment for the topic. <laughs> oh, Nanekuya, you think comprehensive sexual education is assignments? Then you haven't got a clue. It is the hope homeroom tutor and the statements they make to your kids it is the curriculum which is run in school informally in england it is called pshe there are many many attributes it is hidden in so many places cse is even taught in the science curriculum absolutely it is definitely not a one-off assignment they're about to send to your kid and please i am not talking about whether somebody is going to be a particular sexual orientation that's not what cse is we really need to on the, on, unpick some of these things, make sure we understand what it really means. I think we misconstrue it very easily. Yay, Adie, thank you very much. I am so glad that I could. Al Wahab Farouk, he's brilliant and he can be reached. You would love it. Half Nipa, if you know, this is the first time I'm even hearing of the name, but if you do know how to contact him, please inbox me. Please reach out to me and let's make it happen. You want to talk to me on WhatsApp. Um, Suleimana, you can't call me on WhatsApp. Where I am, WhatsApp calls don't work. But inbox me. We can chat. And if it's really necessary, we might have to do direct dial. But we'll talk. Just inbox me and let's talk. It's not as detailed and graphical as people think. I think that's the thing people don't know. It is clearly taught. And Ethel is a teacher like me. It is clearly taught in class. Even here, where I am, which is a very conservative place, they all have their own way of teaching things. But what it is, is that they all dialogue and they do it to fit their values and they do it to fit their beliefs and they do it to fit their needs. Hiding behind we are a Christian community or we are a such community does not work. It handicaps us. You love this initiative. You always feel happy when you hear great minds like myself and Mr. Granting engage. engaged. Thank you. There's a lot to be learned from the program. I learned an awful lot. Al Wahab doesn't want to be in government. Who is Al Wahab? Now you've actually roused my interest. Who is Al Wahab? What does he do? Is he the guy who was on Kofi TV? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You only saw him on Kofi TV. He's not even on social media. Only Kofi can reach him. I will try. Kofi doesn't necessarily respond to all my contacts. But I will try. Those of you who are close to Kofi, please tell him to help me with the details so we can talk. It will be great. Guys, let me thank you. Let me love you. Let me leave you 
So this is not too long. It is just under two hours. So other people will at least be able to settle down for a two-hour rewatch to benefit from what we discussed. I shall be back in touch with you. Thank you so much for watching. I owe you an awful lot for your time. Thank you and good night.